Over the years, Bungie definitely has grown to have the reputation of being able to hide some really awesome and intricate things in various locations of their game's franchises. And with the dedicated community that follows Halo, there's no denying that when something is still yet to be discovered, there's gonna be a lot of people jumping in to try to figure out where whatever the secret is can be found. But back when Halo 3 launched, there was one Easter egg that was hidden away in one of the most unique and convoluted things that Bungie had done to date that started this huge community-wide scavenger hunt that would end up becoming unsuccessful and that even to this day, composer Marty O'Donnell himself has said that he's never been fully satisfied by the incomplete search for this secret Easter egg. And then he went on to name drop us, so the challenge was on. And the more we dug into this Easter egg, we may have discovered that the way that this Easter egg was initially discovered may have led to one of the biggest misconceptions about the Citadel on the Ark in Halo 3. Okay, well, actually, Marty name-dropped Luke and Nana specifically, which hurt my ego a little bit. I guess I'm a little bit of a diva when it comes to that. But Marty, my Twitter's at Rocket Elijah. But you know what? Luke never gets enough attention, so it's fair. But over the years, when it comes to Halo, especially with Halo 2 and Halo 3, Bungie was notorious with hiding skulls in various locations of the campaign levels. And while some of them are hidden through really intricate means, the I Would Have Been Your Daddy skull has always had a reputation for being the hardest skull to find. I mean, back in the Halo 2 days, on the level level outskirts, there was a 1 in 7 chance that if you jumped through all of these loading zones or something and went to a specific location, the skull would be there, but a lot of the time it wouldn't actually be there, and then there was a bunch of theories based off of which loading zones you had to actually hit to get the skull to spawn, then other people said you don't even need to go through loading zones for it to spawn, it's been a whole confusing mess. So when Halo 3 came out, Bungie held the I would have been your daddy skull to the same standard and hid it in one of the most intricate and interesting ways through a form of a unique easter egg that we've never seen in a Halo game to date, and it was a really, really big deal. If we look back at 2007, Halo was at its all-time peak for popularity and hype. There was so much excitement about Halo 3 coming out where players would finally be able to finish the fight, and not only did Halo 3 offer a great conclusion to the Master Chief's original story, but there was such an expansive world through multiplayer, Forge, and other things like Armor customization. And, of course, if you guys remember from Halo 3 back in the day, there was one armor that a lot of people were absolutely obsessed with and wanted so badly. You know exactly which one I'm talking about, the Hayabusa armor. Yes, this was definitely one of the most hyped helmets for whatever reason and armor sets. Players really, really wanted this armor set, and as it would turn out and quickly spread throughout the community, you needed to find and discover all of the skulls in Halo 3 to unlock this armor permit mutation for your Spartan. And back in the day, how you looked in Halo 3, if you were running around with like the CQB helmet on or something, you'd likely get teased. And within the first day of Halo being released and players getting to jump into the campaign and experience it, slowly but surely all of the skulls would be cataloged one by one. Players across the community would talk about the locations they were finding for them. But sure enough, the I would have been your daddy skull was never found in any of those discussions early on. Matter of fact, some members at Bungie even fueled the flames for the search of this skull, insinuating that it would be a very long time before players discovered it and that it was hidden extremely well. And actually, reading through forum posts from 2007 is one of the most bizarre experiences because you see so many angry fans complaining about how they can't get their Hayabusa armor quick enough or complaining that their TV brightness isn't working with Halo 3. <laughs> There's just a lot of really weird stuff going back to the forums. I get that a lot of us were really young, but were we really that cringy back in the day? It's pretty hilarious. Either way, with Bungie confirming that this skull is out there and that it's going to be one of the biggest challenges of Halo 3, you would think it would become this huge search. We've seen the Halo community go crazy over these types of things in the past, and sure enough, they did for three days. Unfortunately, shortly after the release of Halo 3, the ISO file got leaked online, and some hackers managed to use a hex 
text editor to actually find a sequential code that essentially pointed everyone to the exact location in order that was needed to get the I would have been your daddy skull to load in. Essentially, these hackers found out that on Halo 3 The Covenant, if you jump through the Halo rings in a specific order, just bam, the I would have been your daddy skull would just spawn right there and you were done. From there, the order of the rings that you have to jump through for the skull to spawn in would go online, would be posted across the internet, and very quickly, if anyone was looking to find the I would have been your daddy skull, a quick Google search would just tell them the order and it would be done with. Now, don't get me wrong, back in the day when I was looking for the skull, that's exactly what I did. Just a quick Google search, I found out that the order of the rings I had to jump through was four, six, five, four, five, three, four, and just kill all the flood in the area and then jump through the rings and at the end, the skull would spawn in. But it's one thing we've talked about on this channel before and we wanted to go a little bit more in detail in this video, that there was methods and secrets that were hidden for this Easter egg to give players clues and directions along the way as to how to solve this mystery on their own without having to look at the actual game's code. And I've even seen players post online after the skull was discovered that there was no way that anyone would have been able to figure it out had these players not jumped into the hex code and figured out the loading sequence. So with Marty's tweet to us kind of challenging us, we wanted to revisit the skull. We actually figured out some really interesting things about it that you might actually not have realized that really makes us wish this didn't get leaked because the process of discovering the skull is one of the coolest things. And at the very least, we can share what was intended to be the way that the first set of players experienced this Easter egg. And hey, maybe one day you're showing your friends how to get all of the skulls in Halo 3 and you can at least tell them the story about this and the legacy of what was originally intended can live on. So going back to those first couple of days before the game's sequences were leaked, there was a lot of players speculating which level the skull would appear on. During Halo 2, I Would Have Been Your Daddy Skull was one of those skulls that had a 1 in 7 chance of spawning, which was something people were a little bit worried about coming to Halo 3 that it'd be one of those RNG type things. But also the I would have been your daddy skull is abbreviated to seven letters. It's also seven syllables. And so it's really not that crazy to see why some people would look at the Covenant, which is the seventh campaign level as a prime candidate. And with all the terminals discovered and the one skull that's hidden away at the second tower, looking at the area with the giant seven Halo rings or literal hoops to jump through would have at least been a plausible place to look for a possible Easter egg. And I'm I'm sure many players did check that area to try to find that last skull and get that Hayabusa helmet that everyone wanted so bad. But for the most part, a lot of people have looked into the rings as just a random sequence you're supposed to jump through. However, more musically inclined players have noticed that there are different musical pitches at each of the Halo rings. After the hackers got the hex code and found the sequence, players soon realized that jumping through each of those hoops plays a different pitch, where once you jump through all of the hoops in order. You've not only unlocked the Easter egg, but you've also successfully have created the Halo melody or the end of the Halo melody, the last seven notes of the Halo melody, which is really cool, meaning that this Easter egg was originally intended to be discovered by players who would have recreated the Halo theme through the various Halo rings. Now, I can still see some people arguing that that is way out there, and how would players just be able to jump in there and recreate the Halo theme when you could recreate create any number of musical songs through these Halo ring melodies. It's a really good point, and mind you, my music theory isn't nearly as good as it was back when I was in high school, but I was concert band student of the year in 2013. I'm kind of a nerd. But essentially, the Halo rings each represent a different note, and while I've seen a lot of different community posts over the years suggesting which scale it is, when I actually went in and played it with a keyboard, none of the scales actually lined up correctly. But we can all agree that these seven Seven notes aren't just a typical major scale. The tricky part though is that when you are standing next to a ring, it has a very long synthesized hum noise with it, and it does take a few seconds to walk from one ring to another. And even with the best ear, it can be really difficult to be able to figure out what the change of pitch was moving from one ring to the next. So even though I would sit here with my keyboard trying to figure out which note the ring was playing and just use Using my ear, which typically wouldn't be something impossible for me, it actually turned out to be quite difficult. However, to make it even more obvious, Bungie and Marty O'Donnell literally put 
but all of the rings in a cutscene going one right after another that moves much quicker than the Master Chief can walk from one end or from one ring to another, which gives players the chance to quickly try to listen in and to figure out which note individually is assigned to each ring and what the difference in pitch is from one ring to another. Now, I'm Hopeful I'm 100% accurate on this, but from what I could understand with my keyboard, if I numbered these rings going in reverse order from seven to one, as one being the front of the room and seven being the back of the room, basing it off of this cutscene and me just trying to play along with my keyboard watching this cutscene over and over again, I found that the notes were A, G, G flat, E, D, D flat, and B. This definitely narrows down significantly the number of songs you could make when just playing random notes on a keyboard when you only have these seven specific notes to choose from. So from there, I guess the mystery could be a little more confusing, but the cutscene that plays right when the Arbiter is killing the Prophet of Truth plays a little hint. And the long cutscene when we see the eighth Halo ring coming out of the arc right after you finish this level literally just blasts that Halo melody as a friendly reminder that hey, this track definitely exists and maybe you should look into it more. But I'd like to think had players gotten this far before this leak would happen and they just knew that there were different notes here and that each ring had a different pitch associated with it, which I feel like players would have discovered sooner than later, some would have at least started playing around with the seven notes that they had in front of them. To make it even easier if you didn't know where to start, I would recommend the one halo ring that looks different than the rest, the giant red one, which lands on the E note. I'd like to think at some point someone would have gone through there and tried playing through the Halo theme. Sure, for the sake of this easter egg, you have to just trigger the last seven notes. It actually doesn't matter what you would enter for the first sequence, but with these seven notes, you can actually play the entire Halo theme, which would mean if one person would have thought, hey, what if we just play the Halo theme through this, they wouldn't run into a roadblock stopping them from playing the song correctly. All of the notes are there to do it. As a matter of fact, I painstakingly went through what the 28 note sequence would have been if I was just to recreate the entire thing on my keyboard. And of course it would have ended on those last seven notes being that same number sequence that those hackers who went into the hex code would have discovered. So when we decided to jump in to try to punch in these notes that I was trying to read into. We got the Kikawani squad back together. We dove in and we just spent a ton of time in the Citadel once again. Matter of fact, if we divided the entire main Halo melody into four separate parts, just the main strings between the rests, only the second and fourth string have seven notes in it with only that last string starting on the fourth ring, which is lit up in red, which would make sense if people were playing around with it, but that probably doesn't matter all that much because if someone would have just gone through and played the entire 28 note thing they would have figured it out and then eventually people would have probably figured out it's just the last seven that's needed still i think it's a really interesting easter egg that a lot of people overlook just because the code was just so plainly out there before there was this search that would have built up a really unique narrative and a story along the way i think bungie would have had a lot of room to even drop hints had it been a long time where players hadn't discovered anything such as little clues like hey you literally have to jump through a lot of hoops because it puts it right there in front of you and once you realize there's different pitches and the hardest part is just figuring out what those notes are honestly if you just play around with those seven notes you're gonna fall on the halo melody eventually and as we were doing research for this we realized that in the rush to be the first people to announce the easter eggs discovery there's one small but literally massive detail that's often misunderstood and misrepresented but what's really interesting is that even after we saw solved this easter egg or we found the process that was probably most likely intended for players to solve the easter egg correctly, we took some time to look through the code of the game itself to see how maybe these players were able to figure out how the easter egg was initially solved. You know, we just wanted to have the research correct for this video. And in the process of trying to break down where in the code it explicitly reads the player's movements jumping through the hoops to accomplish the easter egg, we actually found a really interesting detail that was a huge misconception to us 
us literally up until we did research for this video over the past couple of days. And I think a ton of people in the Halo community will have no idea about this, but if we're reading into the code correctly, and we're pretty sure we are, we had several eyes look at this also. Well, the people who leaked the Easter egg and were the first people to quote unquote solve the Easter egg and gave people the pattern of rings you have to jump through to spawn in that I would have been your daddy skull, they has somehow managed to get the order of the rings as far as their installation numbers completely backwards. You see, in the code, it doesn't actually number the Halo rings. It uses the rings more proper name, like Alpha Halo or Delta Halo, and they're all listed in order. Now, back in the Halo 3 days, there was older names for some of the Halo rings that would later be changed when 343 started involving more of the Halo rings in the story. But it actually is really interesting that they have all of the Halo rings listed in the Easter egg backwards, or they gave them alternate numbers for jumping through hoops and what their actual installation number is. So for instance, whenever you look up a guide for how to do this Easter egg, typically you see the string of numbers that we talked about earlier in this video, but with the exception of installation 04, which will always be the middle ring, no matter which direction you're going, all of the other rings are actually mislabeled by whoever first discovered the Easter egg and numbered them according to the order you would first initially see them if you walked into the Citadel for the first time. It makes sense for people just trying to solve the Easter egg, but for the people who are more interested in the lore, a lot of people didn't realize that all of the rings are ordered in reverse where the first halo ring or installation 01 is actually the seventh ring that you see walking into the citadel which would mean if you were standing at the control panel where truth stands you see installation one and then the furthest one away is installation 07 where the people who solve the easter egg list the numbers off in the order you would see them first walking into the room this would actually technically lead to a lot of misconceptions about the lore if someone was trying to just look into the Citadel and understand what this room actually was. It's not the biggest deal, it's not earth shattering, but it was a really interesting detail to see that technically all of the rings are reversed, and the ring that we were on in Halo 2 is actually this ring and not this ring. I don't know if this information would have actually changed anything in the course of people trying to explain how to get the Easter egg, but it actually makes even more sense because you can only do the Easter egg after you kill the Prophet of Truth, and you're starting at the platform where the control panel is and you would make your way backwards. So once you jumped through all of the Easter eggs going that way, rather than clearing the whole room and making your way back, how the typical walkthrough suggests, it would actually be more efficient with less walking. And then at the end, the last two numbers you would jump through if they were going off of the installation numbers would have been five, then four, and that would be facing you in the right direction to make your way back up to the front to grab the skull. This might be a little bit too convoluted, but we really wanted to dive in to everything that we potentially could have found out about this Easter egg. And we thought that that little detail is something that probably a lot of you guys don't know about. And then one thing that's also really appreciated is that once you jump through all of the rings, it plays this little musical cue showing the last seven notes of the halo ring, kind of confirming what you had just put into it. And that was a really unique way to kind of build up the accomplishment of finding this skull. It definitely feels like the precursor for things that Bungie would do in the future, like how they handled raids and destiny down the road and having that more convoluted puzzle solving. And we can probably thank the earlier Easter eggs like this for paving the way for the larger raid type experiences you would see in things like destiny. This has actually been one of Luke and I's favorite Easter eggs for a long time. So it was actually really cool that we got the chance to jump back in and we had the incentive to relook at the story because getting to look at it from the more musical perspective and how literally the notes are presented right in the cutscene and the Halo melody is played right in the next cutscene were little details we didn't see before and it was a lot of fun for me to try to put together my very limited music ability to crack this code but I think anyone who is more fluent in music probably would have figured it out a lot easier. Like I said, I'm pretty confident that my knowledge on music is correct here. If I'm wrong, someone could leave in the comments below fixing it for me. However, as long as you had the differences between the different notes correct, you would still land on the same sequences. It would just be a transposed version on the keyboard. It's confusing. But there you guys have it. One of the coolest Easter eggs hidden away. The full story we hope is here now. So we're going to throw the ball back in Marty's corner. You want to tell us what those glyphs mean in ODST or the J signs? We got a whole gang of people wearing tinfoil hats over here. If it's nothing, just tell us. Tell us we've gotten it all, please.